hello hello welcome to the video as you can see by the title today's video is going to be about toddler eczema excuse my puffiness i'm 33 weeks pregnant today and this breathlessness is just a little bit awkward <laughs> um anyway so just a little bit of background on me if you're new here my name's alex and i have a two year old and what is he february month april two year old and two and three month year old boy and i'm pregnant with my second uh let's just have a look here oh that's awkward <laughs> let's try that again that's better so anyway let's just get into the video because i'm sure if you've clicked on this you're here to actually find info about eczema in toddlers now let's just start out by saying i am in no way an expert on this topic and if you have a child with eczema then you're going to want to speak to healthcare professionals which i am not but the reason i wanted to talk to this is talk to you about this is you might be in a similar position to where my husband and i were a few months ago where we had a, have a child with eczema but just weren't really sure what to do about it so uh i've just described jed's eczema for you he tends to get it on his wrists from like his wrist to his elbow and it can get uh, when it's my when it's mild it can be just like little light red patches but sometimes it can flare up and get really red and angry looking and sometimes he can get it across his torso as well so a few months ago what i did and i guess i would suggest talking to your doctor as a starting point if your child has eczema and seeing what they suggest for you so what my my doctor suggested is to see an allergist so the at the allergist they do the skin prick tests and they test for a range of things from like uh, gluten to pollen grasses dust um, and some common food allergies and when we had that test uh, jed came up ne negative for all of those things so he doesn't have an allergy to those things which cause his, him eczema little bit of background info for you on the skin test because i was a little nervous going into the test i didn't really know what to expect but the skin prick test is literally like the lightest pin prick on their skin jed didn't flinch it's not painful in the slightest and they just do the pin pricks on their skin and write in a little text next to it what it is and if he is alert and then they if he is allergic to something it will come up as like a little mosquito bite so completely non-invasive very easy to do um i think they can do blood tests as well maybe that's for more extreme cases um our allergist actually did say to me he's probably not allergic to anything because she's seen eczema that's much 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 worse than his so anyway he's not allergic to anything but she did explain to me that just because someone is not allergic to something doesn't mean they're not intolerant to something so i could be wrong about my understanding of this so please do your own research but from my understanding an allergy is an allergy that's a stupid thing to say an allergy is where you know yeah you'll have an immediate reaction basically to whatever you're allergic to and that reaction will will rain, uh, differ in its severity from person to person from something like you know a rash or anaphylactic shock and and that type of thing um intolerance from my understanding is um I guess it i guess it results in symptoms that are uncomfortable but not as dangerous as an allergy that's like a really layman's term understanding of mine and i also feel like intolerances build up over time so you might like be able to tolerate a certain amount of something but if you have too much of it that's when it might um 
present in these uncomfortable um, side effects. So anyway, let me get back to where we are with Jed. So allergies came back negative, which on the one hand is great. On the other hand, it would have been good to have like a definitive answer and it kind of left us scratching our heads. Now, I'm lucky enough to have a cousin who is a dietitian. So I've been working with her lately to come up with a plan for finding out if Jed's um, uh, eczema is triggered by a food. And I'm fairly sure it is because I have noticed that tomatoes, for example, in contact with his arm tends to flare up. But here's the, here's the catch. I originally was of the understanding that you would have an intolerance to particular foods, for example, a tomato. But it doesn't quite work like that, apparently. So the foods come in groups and they're like different acids or the different categories of groups. So it's when you eat a tomato, your body doesn't go, oh, incoming tomato. It's, it's more like the enzymes and the acids and the what have you that make up that food that cause the, the issue. And so there'll be other foods in that group which create the same problem. So when we're looking at testing intolerances, it's not just about finding a specific food necessarily. It could be about finding an entire group of food. Um, so I am working with my cousin, the diet, dietitian, to test that for Jed. And that's really just what I wanted to talk about today. So like I said to you, this isn't a medical um, guide or suggestions or anything like that I'm not going to get into that because it is complicated and I don't want to give anyone the wrong advice my aim is really just to give you a starting point like maybe see an see a doctor see an allergist and if you don't get anything like from that you can see a dietitian another cause of eczema that I've heard is that it can be like gut related so you know gut bacteria or that there could be a deficiency in the diet zinc is one that i've heard of so there's all kind of different avenues that we need to explore and we're just currently exploring the diet side of things so i just want to tell you a little bit about where we're at with the diet stuff we're at the beginning of testing and this is the hardest part because at the beginning of testing, we're starting out with a base diet with, um, with foods that are unlikely to cause a reaction. So basically his breakfast is oats with some golden syrup. Lunch options are we're like gluten-free, wheat-free pasta, gluten-free, wheat-free bread, um, and pears. So pears, like whole pears, and then I made some pear jam, like a basic pear jam recipe, which is one of the recipes um, my cousin gave me. And I made him some little cashew biscuits. Cashews are okay, apparently. Um, so, oh, and some like pot gluten-free potato chips. So those are basically the foods that he's been eating for four days now and it and oh and like plain mince rissoles plain chicken mince rissoles it's been challenging i will say oh and egg whites sorry i keep remembering the foods egg whites eggs he only eats the whites doesn't like the yolks um so it has been we're on what day uh, let me see i'm keeping a food journal here of of what his skin looks like one two three four we're on day four now i'm keeping a diary and on, in the diary i'm writing like i don't know if you can see this i'm writing what his skin is like so skin clear and then i'm writing what he had for breakfast lunch and dinner and i'm keeping a note of whether he liked that food or not and um i'm keeping a note of what we're testing 
So first few days, uh, so what you want to do is be on the base elimination diet until their skin is completely clear for a while. And then you, when then we're adding the things that we're testing and in we're sort of bombarding him with those foods so that we can see if we get a reaction. And there, this is the document. I've got a document here that is from my cousin's uh, clinic where she works and the suggested order of testing. And I'm telling you this just for your interest, not as a suggestion on what you do, but they suggest, okay, so you go on the base diet and then you want to test milk and then wheat flour and then bread. And then you're moving on to a food group called salicylates, if I've pronounced that correctly. And so that includes uh, some particular fruit and vegetables and spices. And then after that, you're testing something called, I'm going to say this wrong because I said it to my husband the other day and he corrected me, but it's A-M-I-N-E-S amines. I don't know how to say that. Anyway, that's testing a couple of other things. Bananas, chocolate, cocoa, sardines, ooh, sardines, tuna. Then it's on to MSG. Then it's on to something called propionates. Anyway, there's this big group of stuff that is known as glutamates. And in that are like colors, antioxidants, sorbates, sulfates, nitrates. Yeah, so as you can see, when it's not just testing like one particular food it's testing groups of food so the hardest part is definitely here at the beginning where we're on the base elimination diet i will say though that i'm finding it harder than i think jed is finding it um yesterday is when we started introducing the testing for the wheat um so we added normal plain pasta and some plain crackers the first few days where we were just doing the gluten-free um, stuff was really hard because I could tell he didn't like it either. Um, and I feel like I've got serious mum guilt at the moment because usually Jed's diet is really rich with fruit and vegetables and he hasn't had fruit and veg besides pears for now the fourth day in a row and it'll be a few more days before we can introduce those because at the moment we're still testing the wheat and the bread and you have to test them one at a time because obviously otherwise you don't know what they're reacting to but i'm just taking it day by day trying to be calm about it i feel terrible just serving him up the same thing every meal breakfast isn't too bad because he loves the porridge but yeah i feel just bad i feel bad um but on the other hand i know i shouldn't because i'm doing this for his long-term well-being we really want to find out what it is that is causing the problem so that we can stop him from being uncomfortable with eczema so I know there's a purpose. It's just this beginning part is very difficult. Uh, but anyway, I don't think there's anything else that I wanted to talk to you about with that. Um, I was going to show you like a couple of the food options for the base elimination diet that we've been using. Uh, so I'll do that. This is the gluten and wheat-free pasta that we've been using. It's called Buon Tempo. It's from Woolworths. Uh, I'll show you the cashew biscuits that I made him from the recipe from my cousin, and I'm happy to share that if anyone's interested, just ask. Um, they look like this. They're made from rice flour, cashews, sugar and water i think he seems to like them thank goodness um this is the potato chips they are uh woolworths brand deli style sea salt chips 
Um, I think a lot of chips are actually gluten free, so you might not need to get those specifically. Um, and what else? Porridge. So obviously we've got our oats here. Milk. Oh, cashews because they're allowed cashews. So naturals. 100% cashew spread. This one is from Coles. And I'm sure you can get it lots of places. Pears. So pears, uh, obviously sometimes when you buy pears, they literally take three weeks to ripen. I asked my cousin and she said it's totally fine to give them the canned pears. Again, you need to check with your... Um, you need to check with your own... Um, dietitian i've actually just noticed that the ingredients of this this is stupid because i checked this when i bought this but this says the ingredients include refined fruit juice apple grape peach pear and you don't test you don't want to be including grapes because grapes are one of the things that can be a trigger so i'm gonna to have to look into that maybe or oh, whatever anyway you've got to read your labels case in point um, what else? Plain cashews. He hasn't taken to those. He doesn't really like them, but we tried that. Um, the other thing I have is these. Um, uh, organ, organ corn crisp bread. I found it very tedious to find things that were... Um, not only gluten and wheat free, but free of herbs and spices and other things. It was very, like, it's easy to find gluten free and wheat free, but if you look in the ingredients, they've got lots of other additives and you don't want to be giving, you don't want to be giving the things that have the additives because those are things that you need to test for separately. But this was one of the things that was okay, which is why I'm showing you specific brands. Um, golden syrup is allowed in the beginning. So we've got our golden syrup. Now, when it comes to yogurt, I actually Googled whether coconut was okay. Um, and apparently it is, but again, please don't quote me. Um, the best brand for yogurt that I found was this Koyo one. Reason being is because it has like minimal ingredients in it um a lot of the coconut yogurts will have some extra things like um i don't know if this is right maybe it's like um lemon like citric i don't know but whatever you you want to get like the baseline so this this brand was good jed doesn't like the taste of this yogurt but i found that if i mix in a little bit of golden syrup he likes it and has that with pears um here we have the pear jam that i made if you would like the recipe please let me know i also made some pear chutney which just is pretty much the same as the jam but it also has some celery some salt um what else it's a bit chunkier i have mixed that into his pasta and put some on that plain mince type thing and he's sort of not turned his nose up as much um i think that's probably all of the bread gluten-free bread is pretty easy to find but i just got the free from gluten Woolworths brand um i think that's pretty much it and uh yes yeah, so I what happens from here we only did the base elimination diet for a few days and the reason was because whatever Jed had been eating before we started this was obviously agreeing with him because his skin had been clearing up a bit so we did the base elimination diet for only uh, what was it only two days I think and I decided his skin was clear enough for me to have confidence in moving on but typically you would have to do it for quite a bit longer than that, I think. Uh, so what we're going to do now, I think this document says to test uh, seven days for milk, wheat 
seven days like i cannot imagine testing him for seven days just on each of these things but i'll stick try and stick to it for as long as possible you really have to test it for a decent amount of time because it can take time for the reaction to occur and if you go adding extra foods before the body's had proper time to like build up that food or you know properly show the symptoms then you're just going to mess it up and confuse yourself um something that my cousin did tell me is that we don't have to do this testing all at once so say for example we test the uh, pasta and wheat sorry pasta the wheat and the bread for and then we find out okay cool you don't have any reaction to that or you do have a reaction to that we, we at least we know and then if we want we can move on to adding the next thing or we can completely just go back to our normal diet for a while and then just start from scratch in a couple of weeks when we're ready to pick this up and add in the next thing if it's sort of like for example if i feel like his diet is going to be too restricted for too long then i might sort of do it in stages so we'll see how we go i will do an update on this um later on but i just wanted to sort of explain the base of how we're testing and just sort of give some insight or um just sort of connect with some other parents who might be experiencing the same thing with their kids and if you have any tips if your children have had eczema if you've had any have any tips for me especially if they're i'm really interested in like um deficiencies zinc being one that i've heard of i'm really interested in that i've heard that you can do like blood tests to check for for that type of thing so if anyone has any extra suggestions for me please i'm interested and leave your comments below but thank you for watching to the end i know this was a bit of a rambly video and not really giving you specific info but um hopefully it's given you some connection or a couple of hints on maybe where you could go to start so thanks for watching again um i do my prayer um if you haven't already i'd love to have you subscribe so hit the subscribe button below and click the little picture of the bell so that you get a notification when i put out a new video and i'll hopefully see you again soon bye